Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back. So I, I, I was about to say I, I haven't made a guide video in a while, but I don't think that's true. It's only been a week, but I guess it's it's been long enough. So, um, I was actually inspired to make this video because I was lurking in the chat of a streamer, um, a friend of mine, and there was there was a guy that popped in. He was a completely new player. He started asking a lot of questions, um, and the streamer and I were just basically answering some questions. I thought it was just it was a pretty fun experience, and I want to make a video um, addressing some some of the. Th questions that he asked and I think this is like pretty common like a lot of players probably when you start playing this game you'll be asking these questions um, well actually they're not really questions but I I wanted to give you guys just five tips of what I wish I knew when I first started playing the game or actually five tips on like kind of what to do um, these are general tips this is not nothing like uh, go to Pagos Coast get a water Mona you know farm BA or anything like that this is these are very very general tips for um, all monsters and um, you know you can play the game any way you want you don't have to like follow the most optimal guide and level the the absolute best way possible um, but these are just uh, these are things to watch out for um, and it will actually play into the late game so if you guys are mid game players and you don't know this it's still somewhat important and if you're a late game player this I guess this, this is just for entertainment um, you can definitely add something if you have any like you know tips that you want to give to newer players in the comments I guess you know if they're really new they can go down and read them as well so tip number one um, is is gem slots now I briefly talked about this in my you know briefly is an exaggeration I think I spent like 10 minutes talking about it um, but I'll talk about it again here. The gem slots. Oh shit. Oh, I didn't. I didn't even notice this. Oh, this is this is this is the this is the chosen one. This is the master race. This is a triple square master race. He's. This is the one. All right. Anyways, uh, I, I was distracted by a little bit. I'll, I'll I'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Uh, if you want a more detailed uh guide on like the. On square slots um, I made a video called I think it's called like guide to square slots you can search it on YouTube just type monster super league square slots it should like definitely pop up um, but anyways if you look at these monsters I'll use these jacks as examples because the you know I have multiple copies of these um, as you can see every monster that you get come with random gym slots so there's no way to control this this is completely 100% random you can't choose what slots your monsters have and once you raise that monster you cannot change the gem slots this is probably one of the most um, I guess the, the thing that like kind of makes or breaks a monster sometimes is the, is the gem slots because you know everyone can get a copy of a monster well not everyone but most people can get a copy of a monster get it to evo 3 you know max it out max skill it you know maybe super evolve it or some something like that um, but what really break, makes and breaks a monster is their their gems. You know, if, if a monster has really really good gems, it's just you know it's just worlds apart from a monster with, uh, you know, just mediocre or or, or shitty gems. You, a, a monster is kind of determined like their their the worth of that that monster um, compared to other monsters or other players in the game, or you know people like what separates the. The people in like top 100 PVP versus the people that are like in, in the 10,000s or something like that is is the um, the gems of the monster. Now, with that being said, since you you are limited by the gem slots, so basically only square can fit into square, diamond can only fit into diamond, and triangle you know can only fit into triangle. Um, you're limited by the slots of the monsters. So ideally, you want to have the the gems that are easier to farm. Um, and there are certain shapes that are easier to farm than others. So it basically goes like this. Um, triangles are the hardest to farm. C triangles come from B9 golems. They come from, if you're doing dragons, they come from, I think, I think it was B8 dragons. Um, and yeah, just B9 golems is just bad news. It just, it takes, it takes a long time to farm if you compare it to um, B8 golems. Um, B7 golems is slightly faster than B8. So the hardest gems to get are the triangle ones and then the diamond ones and the square ones are extremely easy to get now i'll show you guys my gem inventory as you can see i only i have 35 triangle gems i have 126 square gems and i have 41 um you know diamond gems this is mostly coming from the fact that i first of all i, I auto dragons b7 which only drops square like when i'm super lazy and you know can't can't uh, be bothered to manual farm B10. I auto B7, 
And also, uh, when I'm farming for astrogems, like really, really seriously farming for astrogems, I'll talk a little bit about that later as well. Um, I'll go into B8, and B8 is the easiest golems to farm, um, the fastest to farm. And it being faster means I can get more runs in and get more gems and get more gold. So usually if I'm really serious about farming gold, I will go, go into B8. Um, and that is the reason why I have so many square slot gems. Now B8 is also not, not just the fastest golems to farm, it is also the easiest golems to farm. Meaning that um, monsters with more square slots are the most valuable because they it's much much easier to gem them up and that's why i was really excited about this jack having triple square um ideally i would say for 99 percent of the monsters in monster super league you want to have triple square like this is the most ideal for almost any monster um just because of the ease of farming these slots there's also another benefit to having the slots which is you know um I'll, it's basically you can have crit rate only on square but I won't talk too much about it because it'll it'll it'll, it'll make this all too long. So that's tip number one. Um, you got to check your monster slots. Ideally, you want to have the most squares as possible. Um, if you can't have all squares, then you can try for like double square diamond, or um, you know, if if possible, you know, square double diamond could be good. You could try to avoid triangles as much as possible. Um, if you had to choose between monsters that have a square slot like this, square double diamond versus a monster that has like this um, square diamond triangle or even square square triangle um, I would say for newer players like beginner players it's actually better for you to use this one instead instead of this one and I'll, I'll talk or, or this one I'll talk a little bit about that later as well and in, in a in a, in another tip so that's, that's tip number one um, tip number two is talking about elements now Elements is the way you kind of um, take advantage of of certain stages by you can basically it's it's kind of like a I guess it's part of a mechanic of the game I can't really call it a cheese it's a it's 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 a rock paper scissor um, basically fire beats water wait no fuck I'm retarded water beats fire <laughs> um, fire beats wood and then wood beats water and light dark kind of counter each other so basically light dark they both have deal bonus damage towards each other um so with that being said most of your monsters that you get early on aren't going to be light dark they're probably mostly just going to be the three main elements um fire wood and water and you you want to kind of abuse the fact that you have certain elements and you can use the use those elements to to help you against certain stages um, what what I mean by this? Let me, let's go take a look at some stages in um, in story and in in golems and, and everything. So if you if you take a look at um, the first map, which is Phantom Forest, now these monsters have wood and water and wood, right? So if you're if you're like really struggling, you don't have very strong monsters, you don't have very good gems. Um, a way that you can actually kind of beat you know still beat these monsters is if you only use wood monsters because wood is neutral to wood and wood has elemental advantage over water meaning that you you, you don't get elemental disadvantage when they attack you and when you attack some of these monsters you always like you you're either element neutral or you have element advantage um, you can see this on almost all stages this one is fire and wood so what you want to use here is like fire because fire counters wood and fire is neutral against fire um, and then over here as well you know this is again wood and water and then this one is um, this one's actually dark fire and wood you want to use fire here because fire is neutral against um, dark and fire and fire has element advantage against wood um, and then if you go on to Pagos Coast you can see that these are all water and fire and this actually has more fire than water uh, what these these mean is they actually if, if they show like two of these turtles and one of like these crab thingies and then like one of these mimics it means that it actually is twice more twice as likely to spawn the turtles than these monsters and um, the, the monsters in the stages are random but even if it spawns the mimic the mimics aren't too strong so like they're they're also you know water so you have element advantage against water and there's a three and four chance that it spawns fire so you definitely do want to use um use water on this stage because the the, the water would counter the fire and the water would be element neutral against the water and then you can you know you can just basically go on and, and it's it's the same for all stages um all future stages you want to use whatever has element advantage now um with that being said what you can do 
to kind of abuse this is you can choose an element that you want to focus on. Now I'm not going to tell you which, which one to choose, like most people actually choose water. Um, there's a reason for that because water is also this the stage uh, where golems B8 is and B8 is the easiest, as I mentioned before, is the easiest to farm. So if you use like a full water team against B, B8, which is fire, you have ele element advantage um, always against this stage. Like all the monsters in this stage are all fire. So if you have like a full water team, you'll be able to like, even without your monsters fully leveled or fully gemmed or like fully evolved, um, they still have a, they still have that element advantage, and the element advantage is actually pretty big. I think it's about like a fifty percent damage increase, which is pretty huge. So you definitely want to abuse that as much as possible. Um, so what a lot of people do is actually they they raise a water team first, and then they go to Pagos Coast because this one's like mostly fire. Um, so they they you know they go up, they they keep farming, and then they unlock these stages, and then they they come back, and then they keep farming the stage. Um, because this one is like just all water and this stage also drops the water Mona because she's also a really good water monster that you can raise. So it basically just keep stacking water until you uh, you eventually are able to beat B B8. Um, another thing you can do is like, if you don't want to play the, you know, the generic route, um, you can also try wood. Um, if you want to do wood, then you can farm this stage. I think, I think this one's all right. Um, you can farm this stage with wood as well, but this is, this stage is slightly harder to farm than Pagos Coast. But uh, it's not going to be as optimal. But if you want to if you want to play the game differently than what everyone else is doing, you can also raise wood first and then farm B7 for the diamond gems, and then you know eventually you can make a B8 team. Um, you eventually do have to make a B8 team, but it's very easy to make a B8 team because B8 is much much easier than B7. Um, it's just it's kind of messed up. These th three stages are actually the the bosses are all the same level. But they just have different attributes. Like this boss is um, is defender type, so he's he has more defense. This one's an attacker type, so he has more attack, but like you know more squish, more squishy. Uh, this one's a tank type, so he basically just has a lot of HP. Um, this guy's really tanky. He's he's a lot harder to kill. Uh, this guy, if you just he's a defender type, so if you just like armor break him, you can still kill him really really fast. Um, and then this guy's an attacker, so if you just like nuke him, he just he just dies. Like he just straight out just gets gets melted. Um, so he he's much much easier to, to farm than the other two golems. So you wanna you can actually abuse the element advantage. Um, you know plus plus going into you know the the, the golem that you want to farm. So since this one's like water, you can raise like a full wood team. Um, if you want to do that, then you can use the wood team against him. Um, I'll briefly talk about the contract monsters. There's three monsters that you get after you log in for seven days, you start a contract. If you log in for 15 days, I think, or is it 14? After that, you get a nat five for free. Now, uh, there's three three contract monsters you can choose from. There's the Fire Arthur um, over here and the Wood wood Valkyrie. Uh, where, where is she? Oh, wait, she, I just, I, just, I missed her. Uh, Water, water Valkyrie, I mean, and then the Wood Odin. Now, um, Fire Arthur isn't really that good early on. Um, he's mostly for, I guess, like mid tier PvP. He's not even top tier PvP. He's just, he's just kind of there. Like he's just, he just, he just is. All right, he just, he just kind of is. Um, water Valk's uh, definitely like a, you know, end game Nukramon. Like she's just, she's just good all around um, from early to late game. Out of the three monsters, I think Water Valk is definitely the strongest. Um, but further on, when you get to level 45, you also get to choose the light versions of these three monsters. And out of those three, the light Odin is the the best, in my opinion. It's this is uh, this is purely subjective, by the way. Um, and what you can do is actually you can choose the Odin, and you can use this to feed into the light Odin to make the light Odin evil three in the future. Uh, not directly feed. You can make her evil two, make the light Odin evil two, and then feed the evil two into the evil two to make it evil three. You know, um, you'll you'll probably learn about this in in the future as you as you play along if you're like completely new. Um, but yeah, what we we can do is you can do that if you choose like an Odin Odin first. Then if you're like planning stat far ahead, you can actually do that in the future. Uh, you can do the same thing with the Valks as well. The light Valks definitely pretty pretty nice. Um, light Arthur is pretty pretty nice too. You can. You can uh, you can choose that if you're planning that far ahead. But what we can do is if you choose to do use the Odin, you can actually use the Odin for B7 as well. If you want to go the wood route, um, 
you know, the water route is definitely just hands down better, but like if you if you want to play the game different from everybody else, you can go the wood route. Um, I don't recommend going the fire route. That's that's just it's just torture. Like you're just you're just um, like you can you can like get a full fire team and farm B9, but uh, B9 actually requires more like specific monsters not just any fire monsters. You can't just farm with any fire monsters. Basically B7 and B8, if you just throw in like four water monsters or four wood monsters, you can you can make a team and it would work. But for B9 it's it's different. You need some you need some decent monsters and some of them are like four stars, uh, like self-sustaining monsters. I won't talk too much about it, but you can you can play the game any way you want. Just just know that there's there's elements in the game and you can abuse that. Um now the other, th the next tip, tip number three that I want to talk about is uh, the stats of evolved monsters versus non-evolved monsters. So let's let's take a look over here. Uh, this is let's 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 use something at, at random. All right, we'll we'll use the, what like people like to compare, like it's something really popular because a lot of people have this monster. Uh, this is the Water water Valk, because you can choose her from the contract, as I mentioned earlier. So a lot of people might have this monster. Now, let's um, in order to make a monster Evil 3, you basically, in order to make a Nat 5 Evil 3, you will need... Uh, wait, my math is so bad. You'll need 12 Gleams, and 4 copies of a Nat 5 to make an Evil 3. And you're, like, it's, it's pretty hard to do that, because I only have... I think I, I've, I've been playing the game for... Um, yeah, for more than a year now, and I think I only have about uh, how many Nat Evil Three Nat Fives do I have? I have one, two, three, four. Is that it? Can't remember. Who else do I have? I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I have four. If I, if I if I forgot something like it's and he's like he or she is over here, forgive me. But I only have four. I only have four evil three nat fives. Like it's it's pretty hard if you're like not a whale to get an evil three nat five. But you can eventually do it um, if you just summon enough and if you work hard enough. Because like you know these this guy's a clan fest monster. So basically, I, you just have to work for him. Um, and then the Shiva is like a fusion monster, so you have to work for him as well. And, you know, these, like, so two of those monsters are, are monsters that I basically worked for. Um, you know, I did have to summon, like, three, three Shivas as well, but I could fuse one of them, so I only needed three copies. It wasn't, it was slightly easier than the others. Um, but you basically, you need four copies of a Nat 5 to make it Evil 3. So, it's pretty hard to do that. Um, so we're, we're going to compare the, but to, in order to make a Nat 5 Evil 2, all you need is three Gleams, which you basically play for three weeks, and you'll, you're, you'll, you're going to be able to get... Um, the Gleams are in, in the PvP um, arena. You can go in and do a little bit of PvP just to get the Gleams every single week. Even if you lose, you still get one point. And you can, uh, with 150 points, you will be able to buy Gleam. So um, these Gleams are used to basically, as evolution material, they can replace anything that and evolve anything from Evil 1 to Evil 2. So uh, that's... That, that, that's a little bit about Gleams. Now, I mentioned the Gleams and I mentioned the monsters because um, what you what you would want to do, ideally do is have Evil 3 Nat 5s. Now, that's, not def that's definitely not possible for everyone. Um, but what you can do is you can Gleam it and make it Evil 2. So this is the stat of a level 50. I guess if you're around B8, most of your monsters aren't going to be 6 stars. They're probably going to be 5 stars. So this is the stat of a level 50 Valk. You can compare the level 60 one as well. Um, it doesn't really matter. But because you'll you'll see that there's the, the stat difference is 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 uh is actually quite huge for 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 these monsters as well. So we'll we'll take a look at the level sixty. Um, you can you can go down and take a look at the level fifties as well and, and compare them yourself, and you'll you'll see that I'm right. So this is a level sixty Valk. Um, she has about twenty k HP, um, two point seven two point seven k attack, and two thousand defense recovery. You don't really need need to look at recovery. It's kind of useless. Um, now that's that's the Valkyrie. Now you can compare that to an Evo Evo two um, four star monster, and there's there's a few Evo two four stars that are decent. Um, some people might have them. 
it's like Victoria, you know. Yeah, there's like Succubus, Yuki, Loki, Sura, like any of these monsters. You can compare the stats, and you'll see that like, um, you know, the the Valk has like much, has slightly better stats than Evil Two Four Stars, but you can go down and you can look at Evil Three Three. Um, or you can look at the three stars. Now, the good thing about using the three stars is, um, it basically in order to make a three star evil three, you either you you, you basically need sixteen copies of that same three star, and that's definitely achievable because they're three stars, so they're they're kind of common monsters. You can summon them from eggs, and some of them are are even even farmable. So monsters like the you know the um, the water Mona, the the water Shelly, the wood Coco the uh, fire candling um, all these monsters are are farmable so if you take a look at their their evil three stats of some of these monsters you'll see that they actually even uh, they kind of they're kind of even with uh, evil two two nat fives you can see this so remember this like yaksha stats we'll just use her as a random example because she is a she is a water attacker as well and then you can look at monsters like the, the water mona now the Watermona is farmable, so uh, making her evil 3 isn't too difficult as long as you farm enough. So you just look at her evil 3 stats. You can see that her attack is higher than the Valk, her HP is higher than the Valk, and her defense is like on par with the, the Water Valk. So basically, um, but she's kind of a little bit unfair because she, she's got a little bit of a buff. Um, some the farmable evil three the, the farmable three star monsters have slightly increased stats compared to normal non farmable evil three monsters. They kind of did this to help out the newer players. So monsters like the Siren, the the Mona, the Shelly, um, these monsters and the Miho, these monsters have increased stats. So basically, you'll see that like the Miho is like you know much much tankier, um, and then she has like you know two thousand a little bit less attack, but like you know ten k or like seven k more more uh, more HP more base HP and then for the Mona you can you can tell that her stats are just like better than the evil 2 um, an evil 2 nat 5 which means that it's actually more more ideal or it's actually more beneficial for newer players to use evil 3 nat 3s versus evil 2 nat nat 4s or even evil 2 nat 5s um, but you can definitely, like, it's easier to, to get her to level 50 and, like, maxed, um, you know, evil 2. Because all you need to do is collect the gleams. So you don't really need to need to work that much for her. So if you do choose her, you can actually just gleam her. Um, you just basically level her naturally. You don't have to waste any materials to raise her to 5 stars. Um, she's basically, you know, she's born as a 5 star. So that's one of the advantages to using the nat 5s. They definitely do have some advantages early on. Um, basically, it just helps you save your resources a little bit. But you don't have to worry too much about not summoning nat fives because they're not, um, they're not at their, you know, they're, they're they're not at their highest level unless they're they're evil three. So you you don't need to worry too much about it. You can use like evil three versions of nat threes, and they will outclass um, the, the like stat wise they will outclass the nat fives, uh, evil two nat fives, or like they'll completely you know they'll they'll basically beat all evil evil two nat fours and they will you know most some of them will be better than evil three evil two nat fives um and or some of them will be basically on par with evil two nat fives so you you definitely do want to use as many evil three monsters as you can because they they like evil two the the jump between evil two to evil three is actually quite large um stat wise they they just get it you know a, huge huge increase in stats um, when you raise a monster to evil 3 so it's better to use like farmable evil 3 monsters than these like rare uh, monsters but they're only evil 2 so that's that's just that's tip number three um, tip number four is that the game has a way to um, infinitely farm resources now I want to briefly mention this um, if you want to know how to do it just like just search monster super league infinite astrogen farming you'll find it it's very simple i'll talk about it once but i won't show it because it'll take too long if i do show it um basically you just catch the monsters uh you catch like easy easy to catch evil like one star monsters 
you take the one-star monsters, you, you get 16 of them, because you need 16 to make an evil 3. You basically you evolve them. Every time you make an evil 2, you come out, you collect a quest. And there's a repeatable quest over here that basically um, gives you 10 astrogems whenever you make a monster evil 2. This quest is repeatable. These challenge quests, all these chal challenge quests are repeatable. So you get the evil 2, you make 4 evil 2s, so you basically you get 40 astrogems, and then you make an evil 3, so you get 60 astrogems. So altogether you get um, 100 astrogems, and it costs 330,000 gold, and then you just repeat that process over and over again, and then you can convert your gold into astrogems. Uh, so you don't have to worry about, you know, not having energy to farm, you can basically keep farming forever. You just turn gold into astrogems, astrogems buy energy, and then energy, you farm some more gold, and then this is the cycle just repeats itself. And um, if you, you basically, if you're able to farm um, golems B7 and above, this the process of turning your energy into gold because you're farming B7 will actually get you a little bit of a profit. And when you convert it back to astrogems, you actually make some astrogems. Um, so you basically, you can actually infinitely farm astrogems in this game. It's it's a little bit slow. It's not as fast as you think. Like some people think, like, this is this is really amazing. Um, it's it's a little bit slow, but the the, the good thing about doing this is you can basically farm golems for, for gems forever. Like you can farm for the, the gems, like not astro gems, but like the gems that you put on the monsters. So you can try to get better quality gems um, if you just keep farming. And then you basically you're able to farm forever. Like just you can you just you can just keep farming forever. Um, so that's that's one of the good things about about that. You don't have to worry about about your your um, astro gems, you know, reaching zero and you can't you can't play the game anymore. Um, the good thing about Monster League is you can you can play you can play forever. Um, so that's that's one of the really cool things about this game. You'd have to like work, wait for stamina to refill. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. You just you just convert it. That's that's all I have to really do to talk about it. But I just wanted you you guys to know that you can do this. So so I can I can bring up some some future points later. Um, the next point is is actually actually i before i mention the last one i'll give like an honorable mention uh, and that's that's investing in decent gems this this one is like 4.5 it's not exactly five because i'll i'll briefly talk about this uh it's just the concept it's it's a very simple concept it, you just when you're trying to break past a certain point say for example you're, you're ma making a team going into golems b8 for the first time you want to try your very best to you know to be able to beat the, the level stably and now if you can't normally you should be able to do that if if you if you're just using random four star gems like uh four star gems that you get from a certain map like pagos coast um you're probably going to be farming pagos coast if you're using a water team and then you might have like a, a lot of these like four star conviction gems. Um, basically, if you gem your monsters, basically just like HP double attack on like all your attackers, throw them into B8, um, have the gems at plus 12, you should be able to beat B8. But if you want to make your teams like more stable or or, or um, get slightly faster runs, um, and you don't have the means to, like some of your monsters don't have like all square because like B8 only drops square. What you can do is like for your triangle and, and diamond gems, you can actually just go and like upgrade them to plus 15. Now this might be, um, this might sound really counterintuitive because you're like wasting a lot of gold. A lot of people might advise against this. But because um, gold and astrogems are infinitely farmable, so it means that the faster your teams are, the more astrogems you're able to farm. Like you can just keep keep this um, rotation on for going going on forever. So it's, it's much, much better for you to invest in something that can help you farm faster um, in this game rather than trying to preserve your resources it's there's no point in preserving your resources in monster super league it's just it's all about like it's it's just it's just go like monster super league is just it's just fast you just want you just want your teams to be fa as fast as po humanly possible and you just you get the most resources and you win the game um well that's if you're free to play if you're if you're a whale you just like you just you just throw money into the game and you win um <laughs> then um but yeah, that's 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 one of the one of the tips. Um, just a, a small point that I want to bring up. Uh, the next point is is like always, always. Um, this is like tip number five. This is like always do. There's two things you should always do, like every single week, um, and that is that is PVP enough to get just get the gleam. 
I mentioned this earlier, you only need 150 points. If you lose a fight, you still get one point. So if you're like super weak and you're losing every fight, doesn't matter, just go in and lose. And um, you basically get these med league medals and you just 150 of them, you can buy a gleam. So you want to make sure you buy the gleam every single every single week. Um, if you're depending on the element that you were, you're focusing on, you want to buy the element for that gleam. So if you're like raising an all fire team or all water or all, uh, actually I wouldn't recommend. Like I, I mentioned before, I wouldn't recommend going all fire. You can either go all, all water or all wood. All water is better, but like all wood also works as well. You can you can do an all wood team and do B7. It's not it's not optimal, but like if you want to if you want to be different, if you want to if you want to be a hipster, you can do that. Um, you know, if you if you want to be special, you can you can you can raise an all wood team and farm B7 first instead of farming B8. But like B8's easier to farm than B7, so you know it's 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 up to you. It doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure you do that every single week. And the other thing is, if you're farming extreme mode, you'll get these things called dragon sigils. These are very very easy to. Um, Actually, they're not easy to get. They're they're pretty fucking hard. Uh, <laughs> these are pretty hard to get. Uh, the reason and the reason why you don't want to waste them is because they, after the week ends, after this timer goes down every single weekend, this resets to zero. So you want to use it up every single week when you get some. Um, if you can't do the higher levels, like at most. I would say B4 is really, really good. This is also one of the reasons why making an all water team is pretty good. Because B4, if you use like your B8 golem team against this B4 and you just like manual it, I mean, if you're starting early on, you probably don't have a lot of sigils. So you might only have like 10 sigils. So that will give you like five runs. Just manual the five runs. Um, and yeah, just manual the five runs. Get the. Get, get whatever gems that he drops and if he drops like he the dragon drops these like special gems you want to you want to keep those gems um he drops like the siphon leech and pugilist set you want to you want to just keep those sets just you you'll 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 probably learn later what they do but you just want to keep them um that's 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 all I'll say for now so yeah that's 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 tip number five that's just like some things you want to do every single week um Actually, there's one more thing you want to do every single week, and that's that's also clan battles. Like, if you can, try your best to join a clan, and do just like even if you just have the shittiest monsters, just like throw in your one level one one star monsters into the into clan battles and just like just just lose. Like, it doesn't matter. Just just throw it in and do it. Um, it's it's still worth the the resources and worth the time to do it because you get the clan points. As I mentioned earlier, there are nat fives that you can work for you can get that seed free that that sweet 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 monster sweet sweet nat five um you want to st start on that as as soon as possible um so yeah that's that's also one of the, the things you want to do every single week um tower of chaos i guess if you play for a month you'll eventually be able to do this so i won't really talk too much about it if this is something you'll eventually be able to do you definitely do want to do it every single month but um it's not really too important it's it's just kind of there you can like you should do it but if you don't do it it's like it's not the end of the world um so yeah that's that's it for the five things that i wanted to like that that new players can can work on um like sh should do like five things to do five five tips um now i'm going to talk about five things that you don't have to worry about um like you don't have to really be concerned about. I think this is also pretty, pretty, pretty nice topic to talk about because a lot of people are concerned about just unimportant things. Like Tower of Chaos is kind of unimportant. This, this is one of those unimportant things, but this is like not that unimportant. Um, the first thing is the first thing I wanted to address is if a monster doesn't have a square. <laughs> this is kind of to um, to contrast my my first. My first tip with the gem slots. If a monster doesn't have a square, it's not the end of the world. Um, I have monsters that don't have squares and they, they work perfectly fine. Wait, do I? Like this? Yeah, she, she, she's pretty bad. I kind of like... Um, yeah, cer certain monsters don't really need the squares. Uh, but sometimes, most of the time, like ideally you want to have as many squares as possible as I mentioned before. But basically, the only monsters that really need the square slots are monsters that don't, that uh, either have a thing that activates when it crits, so like this, critical hits, blah 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 blah, um, or monsters that are um, 
that are like hunter based. Actually, even hunter based monsters without square are still usable. The the ones that like just absolutely need the square, I think, in my opinion, are just are the ones that have like a thing that procs on crit. Like this is only it only procs on crit. Then, um, then it's kind of important to have the square slot to, in order to get the crit rate gem because only square slots have crit rate. But anything besides that, it's like the monster might not reach its maximum potential, but it's still it's still definitely usable without the square. Um, so that's, 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 that's number one. Uh, number two is, is, uh, the question of keep or feed. Like I, I get this, <laughs> I, a lot of people ask me this a lot of times, like, should I use this monster? Should I raise this monster? To be honest, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because as I mentioned before, um, with the whole evil three versus, you know, evil two, nat four, you like evil three, nat three versus evil two, nat four, you don't even want to use an evil you don't even want to use a nat 4 um, unless it has really really special skills like it has really really nice skills because there there's not a lot of evil 3 or um, like fire based healers that are good for that are good and they're evil 3 or evil 2 um, there are a few but it, it might be more ideal to use like an evo evil 2 healer I think healers are the only monsters where um, I would use an e evil 2 nat 4 but anything besides that, basically, I really would not even touch a nat four until um, until I can get it to evil three, unless it has really really unique unique skills that are just like that just completely make or break break the game. Like just they have like just something super unique that you you like your that skill is the only reason you're using that monster. Say for example, like courageous strike monster. Like this one, I can't get to evil three. Um, she has to be kept at evil 2 because I don't have enough verdes, but I would still use her because she's like she's got courageous strike and courageous strike is like super OP um, Against Titans. It's so, like, you know certain monsters have like just this, this one unique skill that that like just works for one specific situation um, And isn't usable anywhere else then you know you can use those monsters as evil 2 as well um, but any four star monsters that you get it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter because you can feed them you can use them you can like just keep them in your storage you can just like not use them it really doesn't matter until you can get a monster to evil three you need 16 copies of that i would not recommend gleaming um i would not recommend gleaming like you know normal four star monsters it's kind of a waste of gleams i would save those as many as i can for nat fives or even event monsters where you know the events not coming back for like another year or so um, and you're just like short like two copies of the monster then you can use gleams for that but normally you want to save all the gleams for the nat 5 so basically all these monsters like all these like evil um, all these random normal element four star monsters they're not they're not optimal like it's it's not beneficial for you to use them until you can get them to evil 3 because you can just use an evil 3 nat 4 and that evil 3 or evil 3 nat 3 that's farmable and you can use the the or even monsters even evil 3 nat 3s that aren't farmable it's much easier to get them to evil 3 because you can just summon some eggs and you can get copies of the, like 16 copies of the monster and raise it to evil 3 relatively easily compared to an evil 4 monster or evil compared to a four star monster um, you know to, to get to evil 3 so you it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter like <laughs> if you can be like oh I have like a water sir I have a water Yuki is she good like it doesn't matter you're not gonna be using her anyways um, you can use her like I'm not saying like you can't use these monsters but like it's just not optimal it's not ideal um, you're better off using an evil 3 like a uh, evil 3 3 star monster instead I know it doesn't it doesn't sound as fun, but it's just kind of the way that the game is designed. It's not as exciting because like if you get a monster that's like somewhat rare, um, like a four star monster, and then you find out that it's like it's not usable until you get like 15 more copies of that monster. It's it's not as exciting. But the good thing about Monster Super League is the the summoning like you can summon quite a lot. They give a lot of free eggs, and you also get eggs from like farming golems and stuff. So summoning in this game is relatively easy, and plus you know the how I mentioned the astrogens are farmable and there's like festivals where you can summon and there's like rates up and everything like that um, and they give like free event eggs they give like free event legendary eggs so like you you can and they also give like these soul stones that you can buy from the shop um, I always buy the soul stones this is not exactly this is not something you have to do 
but uh or not not those soul stones but you can buy like four soul stones for four star monsters and basically if you collect like 50 soul stones you can summon a copy of this the, the four star monsters um uh, so basically getting getting like 16 copies of a of a certain monster if you're really collecting for that monster is not too difficult and it's something you'll eventually be able to do but you don't have to have these monsters to to progress in the game um you know, eventually you do want to raise them some of them are like really really strong like fire succubus um who else damn i have like no monsters that are like normal elements just, just look look at my list like everything's light dark um oh shit oh shit I, sh I should give a i should give a secret tip i'll give a secret tip after the video all right after everything ends and this this has something to do with all the all the random light dark monsters. This is this is like this is this is tip number six that I was supposed to give, but it but th that's pretty much it about the keeper feed. Like it it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because you can get another copy of that monster relatively quickly. Um, the only way I would only reason I would try to keep a monster is like if it has like special slots. Like it's it's got like triple square. Like you want the triple square, then you keep the triple square version, and then you can like feed all the rest. Or, or something like that, you know, you just, you just want that rare triple square um, copy of a certain monster, then, then you can do that. But uh, anything else, it doesn't doesn't really matter, because you'll, you'll, you'll definitely be able to get more versions of the monster, even if you feed it, so it's not, it's not the end of the world. Um, tip number three actually has to do with, like, not getting Nat 5s. As I mentioned before, the Nat 5s aren't really usable until you can get... Um, you can get multiple copies of the Nat 5, and um, the ways to get Nat 5s is, I wanted to talk a little bit about this as well, the best the best possible way to get Nat 5s is to summon during these festivals, like there's actually one coming up, this is the Clan Festival, um, I'm not sure if the Heroes Festival is better to get Nat 5s or the Clan Festival, but basically if you summon enough times during those festivals, you'll get these Heroic Eggs, and the Heroic Eggs basically guarantee you a random Nat 5, so... Um, it, if you're trying, really, really trying to get a Nat 5, I would summon during those times. Those times are either at the middle of the month, so like on the 15th, or usually at the beginning of the month, so like on the 1st, um, the 1st of the month, the, the festivals begin, and they last for like two days. And yeah, and they that's like the best possible time to, to summon and, and use all your excess astrogems that you've been farming since the beginning of time. You can summon during that time and just like you know get your nat fives during during then if you're trying to get the nat fives. Um, nat fives do have their uses. Like you, you might think I'm like shit talking nat fives. Like oh they're not really usable until you can get them to evil three. But eventually you will be able to get certain monsters like certain nat fives to evil three. And the, like like the evil three stats of nat fives are just insane. Like it's just worlds apart. Like this is a, this is a nat four. Like this is a nat five. Okay so like. Um, uh, you can also get these like monsters that are this one's you can get from clan battles this is a clan battle exclusive nat 5 um took me a year to get or actually not not a year took me half a year to get them to evil 3 it, you basically you just you do clan battles you get points and you can summon him um it costs quite a lot you probably need to work for like a month or two before you can get one of him so like you need to and that's like doing clan battles every single day so like it's it's a lot of work but if you're seriously playing the game um you'll definitely be able to get a monster like this this guy's sweet man this guy's fucking sexy uh, anyways uh, um that's 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 pretty much it for getting getting um nat fives now the other thing a lot of people ask me is like for for pvp or like clan pvp or like clan battle monsters this is another thing you really shouldn't have to worry about. Um, this is like, you know, this is tip, this is tip number four of things that you don't have to, like, of, of, of doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so the number four thing you don't really have to worry about is, is your, um, is climbing in PVP and climb and getting in higher Titans or getting higher in clan conflict. Um, clan conflict is basically PVP for clans. If you join a clan, you'll be able to do this. I can't show it right now because it's not our clan PvP time. Um, but it doesn't really matter if you're starting out because, first of all, you want, you're you not going to be able to beat these guys anyways if you don't have good enough gems. So the most important thing is your own progression. You want to go, you want to farm the good gems, and then you can come back after you get some good gems, your monsters like Evil 3, 
and stuff, and then you'll eventually be able to beat these guys. Um, so it's much more important for you to focus on your progression, focus on like you know farming golems, um, getting faster farming teams so you can get more gems, more gold, you know more more everything. Um, so it doesn't really matter if you if you're not able to climb too high in PvP because you're not going to be able to do so anyways. Even if you build a team specifically for PvP, it's still not as good as if you were just going to use your farming team for PvP but had like much better gems. So it's more, much more important for you to have better gem progression and, and um, you know, like more of your monsters evil 3 and level 60 um, than to raise monsters specifically for the purpose of PvP. Um, it doesn't really benefit you too much. Like there's no there's no real benefit to doing this. Same thing with clan battles and, and clan conflict. You really should only be worrying about this after you have like all your farming teams complete. Like you have teams for story farming, for golem farming, for dragon farming, for every farming possible in the game. Then you can start worrying about this. Cause and before that you can you still have to participate, but you don't have to focus on it. You don't have to raise specific monsters just for PvP. You just use your farming monsters and you know if they have good gems they, they should be able to win. Um, you know most of the time Eventually you can start working on this like after you have like maybe a golem speed 10 team or something like that um, Number five is making a team for every dungeon You don't have to do that. You don't have to make a team for every single dungeon You can actually use repeat monsters now with that being said like there's actually one extra advantage to using water monsters, like to raising a water team instead of a wood team. The good thing about using a water team is like, say, this is just an example. Say I have four random water monsters I'm using for golem speed 8. Now these, these monsters will definitely be able to kill this, this golem, no problem, because they have element advantage. And you're going to be able to get a lot of good gems. And if, you're, if you've been paying attention, you, you know that, you know, every monster that you raise or the monsters that you choose to raise, ideally you want to have like triple square. Um, so like when you're farming the monas, you're definitely watching for the slots of your monsters. So you want to make sure like they're all triple square. Like that's that's like absolute 100% most ideal situation. Like they're all triple square. Um, if they're all triple square, then you just you, you're going to be able to put like six star gems because eventually like you know if you're farming B8 enough, you'll be able to um, get six star gems, and then you'll have like all your monas triple square, you know, six star, and then you know they they'll have like six star gems maxed out or maybe like if you farm enough you'll get enough gold um and then like they'll eventually you have enough gold to make them all evil three as well and then you just use that team and you just throw it into b7 like b7's water and if you have like a stronger water team like you don't even have to rely on the element advantage and you just use that water team to, to beat the stage like no problem um and then like for b9 you like if you're if you're using like a wood team, you have like wood self sustainers. Like say for example, you chose the wood Odin. Um, there's some like other monsters, like farmable monsters, like the the ones the legendaries that you get from the first continent, like the wood Boltwing, who also has self sustain. Um, if you farm on like normal mode, you can get this like wood Boltwing. He basically heals himself every time every time that he attacks. So you can actually use those those monsters um, against B9 as well. So like say for example, you raise the B7 team, you can actually use that B7 team against B9. That's also one of the advantages. If you're raising, a, if you raise the B7 team, then you can use maybe depending on the monsters that you have, you can use that B7 team, um, throw it into B9, and then you know maybe like two of those monsters were on your B7 team, and then you raise like one or two monsters that are specific only for B9, um, and then that that team will be able to farm B9. So you don't have to make an entirely new team for every single dungeon. You can use a lot of repeat monsters depending on the element advantage. Um, this also goes for light dark monsters as well. I'll talk about light dark monsters. That'll be my secret tip. All right, that'll be the the secret tip hidden hidden behind this video um, is the <laughs> is the light dark monsters. Um, but yeah, this is already tip number five. So so I'll talk. Might as well talk about light dark monsters right now. Um, the secret tip is the like why I have so many like of these random light dark nat 4 monsters and they're all from rebirth or events in monster super league all the event or all the at least all the important event monsters um and the rebirth monsters are all light dark so that's that's what also that's one one of the reasons why you see like a lot of repeat um light dark monsters like if you go down my list you'll see like this was a rebirth monster this was an event monster this was a rebirth this was a rebirth this was this this one's the same monster <laughs> Uh, this one was given to us for free, but she was also a rebirth monster, um, and she was a dungeon monster like a re really, really long time ago. But that was before I started playing. This is a this is a um, 
I think she was, yeah, she was Rebirth Monster. This was a package monster, but it was basically like the equivalent of an event. You can buy him for Astro Gems. Um, this was a Rebirth Monster. This was this one's rare. This one you can you can only get from Light Dark Eggs. Um, this one was yeah, this one's rare too. This one was a package monster that, that you could buy. This was a Rebirth. This was an event. This was a you know this this one's also Rebirth. Um, this one was an event. This one's a rebirth. This one, this one's rare. Um, this one is also rare. This one is rebirth. This was a rebirth. This was rebirth, rebirth, rebirth. Normal. This one's rare. You know, rebirth, and then like event, rebirth, fusion, rebirth. You know, this one's rare. Uh, rebirth. You know, and that's that's everything. And this this was given to free for, for to everybody for free. So like you, as you can see, most of the monsters that I have that are light dark are from events and rebirths. So you want to take advantage of that as much as possible. This is this is secret tip number six. Um, and to do rebirths, you basically you go in, you feed some random monsters, like you just feed some random nat threes, and they have a chance to come out as um, as the rebirth monster. And there's like a 5% chance that it comes out as a light or dark rebirth monster. And when you reach we reach 30 on this um, th this rebirth count, it'll guarantee like give you one of the uh, light dark monsters on the rebirth list. So f for this list, it's either the light dark birdies or the light dark mihos right now. And this re refreshes every single or this changes every single um, every single month. And there's also like special events. And there's also like the heroes fest rebirth, which you you have to feed like four stars into. Um, but yeah, you can get a lot of like really strong monsters using this. And the good thing about using light or dark monsters is they have no element disadvantage against anything. So you can use them on any, any stage that you want. So like monsters that are very, very versatile, like these, um, aggressors, like, you know, she basically just HP equals attack. So you just stack HP and she has a lot of attack. Uh, you know, like monsters like these, you can use her on like any stage. Um, so... So yeah, that's 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 secret tip, uh, secret tip number six. You wanna? Oh, oh, there we go. That's oh, I finally got the dark birdie. Oh man, there's only two days left in the rebirth. I've been I've been trying to get this guy. I I wasn't able to get a single one. Let's see, let's see what slots he has. Ah, so sad. No score, but it's fine. Um, he doesn't really need it. I mean, I I could gem him with a with a square slot with a crit, but it's it's fine because he. He, his heal's based off HP, so you can also gem in triple HP. Main reason I wanted him was because I, I just need another filler monster for clan battles, but he's he's pretty good. Um, so that's, 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 I finally got him. As you can see, it's not, it's not too difficult. There's about a 5% chance, and you just, you, you want to, like, if you just started playing the game, um, like, during this month, it might be too late for the Mihos and Birdie, because there's only two days left. But maybe, hopefully next month, they'll have, like, some... Like, most of the Rebirth monsters are very, very strong. Um, like, they're they're really good monsters. Most of them. And you want to take advantage of that as much as possible. So you want to do, do your Rebirths. Um, if you have some, like, decent Light Dark monsters, like, they're, they're really versatile. You can use them anywhere, like the Birdies and the Mihos. You can you can just throw them into any of your dungeon teams, and they'll, they'll work fine. And they'll even work for B10 as well, because, like, B10's dark. So like, yeah, there's like no element advantage against this team. It's just, you just, you just ha kind of have to use what you can um, against like B10. But I, this isn't a B10 guide. You can, you can look up my B10 guides if you want to, if you want to learn how to do golems B10. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. It's been a somewhat long video, but I think this is pretty helpful for newer players. It is kind of learning a little bit about the game. And I don't think I wasted too much time. Everything I said in this was pretty, um, it was pretty jam-packed, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.